Hi everyone, Dr. Victoria Skirbo here speaking to you from the Seeds of Transformation Healing Center in Wareham, Massachusetts. Today is um, Thursday, May 30th, 2019, and the moon is in Aries. Uh, we have a busy day today. The Aries moon is very busy, uh, squaring Saturn and Pluto. Those squares are crisis in action squares. Um, both Saturn and Pluto are pretty heavy duty uh, energies. Of course, Saturn being the structure of our reality, the rules and regulations, the Lord of Karma, Pluto being um, <clears throat> the Lord of Death and Rebirth, as it were. Um, Pluto symbolizing the soul, Pluto in, in Capricorn requiring us uh, through its journey through Capricorn to become more uh, emotionally self reliant. Um, while letting go of a lot of the security structures that have kept us both feeling secure and yet feeling trapped as well. Um, the moon in Aries, of course, is very much a, um, a self-sufficient energy. It's an energy of wanting to uh, you know, be uniquely who you are, wanting freedom. And so we're pushing against the structures of power today. Um, and we also, uh, and then as we move forward, the moon actually makes a conjunction to Vesta. Vesta is an asteroid um, that is uh, connected to what we um, are devoted to. And Vesta is in Aries. And so whenever a planet or an asteroid is in Aries, it's always about new beginnings. There's always a, a new, uh, ex sort of like an exploratory, right? Um, I, I guess businesses do that. They they do this exploratory thing, or I know uh, towns do it. Like, oh, let's build a new, let's build a new sewer plant, and they well, let's do an exploratory. So, so Vesta in um, in Aries is somewhat of an exploratory energy. Of course, Vesta is the planet or the one of the asteroids, uh, one of the major asteroids. All of the major asteroids, save Chiron, uh, which isn't really an asteroid, but the uh, four major asteroids in the asteroid belt that most astrologers utilize uh, all have feminine energy and uh, very close to the goddess. And of course, um, uh, Aries is a, is a warrior energy. So there is this warrior energy uh, out there. Today we actually have what's forming in the sky is a Yoda finger of God. And it's being created by uh, the North Node and and Juno in Cancer. Of course, the North Node in Cancer is our need to uh, feel our feelings and uh, and focus our future on uh, nurturance and taking care of one another and taking care of our families and emotional security. Um, and we have Juno there, which is the planet of or the asteroid associated with um, uh, partnership. But it's also associated with the powerless, and so there's, you know, a women, children, infirmed, uh, uh, the poor, immigrants, you know, all of these people sort of uh, who need help uh, is sort of all under the auspices of Juno, especially Juno and Cancer, right? So Juno and the North Node are actually making a, um, a sextile to Venus. Venus is in Taurus right now, very powerfully in Taurus. Venus in Taurus deals with our essential needs. What do we need? What is essential for life? Uh, and they are all, uh, and, and Venus is making this supportive connection to the North Node, informing the North Node of what it is that we need in order to move forward. What are the essential needs? We have, we have um, Juno there, and so relationship is part of the picture, as is taking care of those who are less fortunate than us. And these two, this whole configuration is actually uh, making in conjunction to Jupiter in uh, Sagittarius. And Jupiter is what we believe to be true and our belief systems, and it's retrograde. So we are reviewing our belief systems. And so we, it's necessary for us to a certain extent to include those who are less fortunate uh, as we review our, re, re, as we review our, our systems and the things that that we uh, believe and how do we how do we make this world a, a better place Sagittarius is uh, can be very close-minded can be very religious uh, Sagittarius uh, in its more negative aspect has to do with uh, like fundamentalist uh, 
religion. But Sagittarius is also very broad-minded in its greatest sense. It's like the sense of seeing that we're on as different as we are. We're all kind of the same. We're all human beings trying to make the most or trying to uh, trying to find happiness, really. And, uh, and some sort of sense of safety, right? So, so we have that. So that's going on. So that's, that's sort of a big configuration. But as far as specific aspects, there are a couple of specific aspects that I want to talk about today. That was just sort of a general, um, general look-see. Um, today, the planet Mercury is making a semi-square to Uranus. Now, Mercury and Uranus came together in Taurus that planted the seed at that time, um, the higher mind, uh, Uranus, and the lower mind, Mercury, came together. Uh, Uranus sort of planted that seed into, into the higher mind, and then Mercury moves on because Mercury is very fast moving. So Mercury moves forward uh, from that relationship. Um, Uranus also moves forward, uh, but slowly, slowly, right, because it takes 84 years to go around the zodiac. Uh, it, it doesn't take that long um, for, uh, for, uh, <clears throat> for Mercury. Excuse me. <coughs> the fastest moving planet because it's the closest to the sun, right? So <clears throat> the semi square is the 15 degree Taurus mark in in the in the cycle of um, of phases and aspects. So this is where Mercury starts to slow down and sort of coalesces whatever was seated at that time, and it's about it's about producing the, the, the root system for, the, for, the, for that which was planted at that time. And so this is a more internal exploratory time. And so we will find ourselves as far as our relationship to our higher spiritual self as being more of a, okay, now let's, let's create the root system or the structure so that whatever this, this download that we received uh, has, a, has, a, has something sturdy on the ground to build itself upon. So there's that energy. Um, we also have an inconjunct between Mercury and Saturn. Now that's challenging for Mercury, uh, <clears throat> but this inconjunct to Saturn really is, uh, inconjuncts are always irritating. <clears throat> and Saturn is like, it works, it doesn't work, it works, it doesn't work. So we're also <clears throat> trying to figure out how best to make adjustments within our own creations so that uh, we can bring them out into the public eye. So there's a little more work that we have to do. So if you're writing a book or you have a project, this is the time to start editing and perfecting, um, especially if it has something to do with our ability to communicate uh, to one another. Uh, and we also have um, a beautiful sextile between Venus and Neptune. Now, <clears throat> Venus sextile Neptune informs Venus uh, to a certain extent about those people who uh, are feeling like they don't have a place, right? So there's this the taking care of the, the least of us, right? And we have to, re so, so not only is it sextiling uh, Venus, which I talked about in forming uh, the North Node, it's also trining the North Node and trining um, <clears throat> Juno. So this theme of taking care of the least of us is is very is very is very uh, much a theme today, and and there's a lot of energy for it. So we can actually have a lot of great ideas around this, and uh, and actually do some good, as it were. <clears throat> And then uh, the last aspect, and all of this is happening sort of very early. It's actually happening kind of right now. And the last aspect is an opposition between Mercury and Jupiter. And uh, Mercury-Jupiter oppositions um, are opportunities for us to become aware of what we believe and the information that we have. Um, it's also uh, Jupiter is the left brain and Mercury is the right brain. So there's a balance of... Uh, right brain and left brain today and so you can utilize that but it really sort of gives us an idea of where we're at and how much further we have to go when it comes to ideas and our beliefs so there's a lot of energy with mercury there's a lot of energy uh, and, and mercury probably is getting the most uh, the most aspects to it today besides the moon which uh, always has generally always has a lot of aspects to it um, 
and it's really about refining our thoughts okay and 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 building upon them and 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 you know checking the way we think because what we focus on and what we think generally brings our uh, our reality to us right um, it's and it's in part it's 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 thought mercury and in part it's imagination which is more of a of a neptune a neptune thing so we have both those things today um, you know full speed and it's not unusual that uh, with all this feminine energy and women power and I could go on about that because there's other things in the chart that also invoke that including the moon moving over Eris <clears throat> and Vesta on Eris uh, Eris being the uh, the goddess of discord um, and probably neck along with Pluto in, in Scorpio um, uh, last year, the year before, was it 2000, Pluto and Scorpio, was 2018. Uh, and Eris, um, over the last few years, has created this this wave of uh, pissed off women who have said enough is enough. And so that's also activated. So there's all kinds of rising of the feminine energy. And so we can we can take that energy, we can take that that drive, and we can change it. We can change the world. So if you feel like you need to go out and stand up for women's rights, for the rights of children, for the rights of immigrants, whatever it is, you do that. And then in your own life, make the little the little steps that will. And you know, not everybody can go out. You know, every, some people have responsibilities. I myself take care of my mother, who's going to be 99 on her birthday. So. I don't have a lot of latitude to just go off and, 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 and do what I do. But I do this, right? I, I try to inform in my own way. I try to uh, make, make a difference, but make a difference in a more positive and life-affirming way instead of, you know, doom and gloom. I mean, it's hard out there. You know that. You don't have to hear that. Um, what, you, what you probably need to hear and what I need to hear, so I talk to myself in these, is that there's something you can do about it and a lot has to do with your focus and your energy and what's in your heart and and coming heart f heart first so all right i have to go chitterbug time for chitterbug to eat his breakfast um if i have if he's around today um and he wants to be on camera maybe we can get him on camera so you guys can see him again maybe i'll do a reading with him around although he's getting very crazy um and you know he's a squirrel so he's like pew, 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 pew. so he tends to make a mess wherever he goes so I try not to put my cards out with him okay I know I talked a long time have yourself a great day like and subscribe and I'll see you again soon or tomorrow or later okay bye